we have already uh, electronic payment systems like WeChat Pay, Alipay, existing in China, actually quite prevalent uh, in China. Uh, what does DCP offer that those things cannot? Well, in China is a very unique situation. As you mentioned, there's a duopoly. Alipay and WeChat take over 95% of the market in terms of electronic payments. Uh, this is not necessarily a good thing, actually. I think in, within the country there is, is, there is debate about whether or not there's too much power in the hands of these tech companies, right? DCP sort of levels out the playing field, or at least provides an alternative to give uh, banks, for example, the ability to actually transact and the technologies to provide their customers with an alternative. Uh, that's one, right? Second, uh, we have to remind ourselves that um, technically, even though Alibaba seems like a very uh, stable company, uh, you know, in, in there is the possibility that it could default uh, because it's not really asset backed the same way, let's say, a sovereign uh, currency is. So right. the PBOC can guarantee the, the fiat. Beyond that, I think we also have to consider that uh, there, you know, we're, we're just talking about payment right now, but the potential for the DCP and the technology is as programmable money. So instead of just having a payment functionality, which is a traditional thing, you can imagine programming functionality into uh, money that is very useful. So for example, in the current uh, economic crisis, there's been lots of bailout money. And a lot of that bailout money is actually just given to the banks and given to, in, in China's case, the state-owned enterprise. That money may not be efficiently used to stimulate the economy because uh, the, the money is used for uh, things like stock buybacks in the states, right? Mm -hmm. For example, in the United States, the airline industry uh, you know, is asking for $50 billion in, in bailout. And that happens to be roughly the amount that they spent in stock, stock buybacks uh, for, uh, from since the original uh, crisis from uh, 2008. Right. So with a programmable money, you can imagine uh, putting any sort of uh, uh, functionality in it. You can limit the yeah. use and you can also directly transmit that money to the people who need it the most. So for example, the SMEs and the financially excluded, the most fragile uh, people in the economy with the offline businesses um, that need real stimulus. Uh, now we have a mechanism for the, uh, for the People's Bank of China to directly uh, stimulate the economy at that fine granularity um, and with, with a, a more refined fiscal policy.